welcome to another video. So in my previous video I spoke about the fact that I bought a new camera and it's about time I think I revealed what that camera is. I'm messing around a little bit with Final Cut Pro because that's what I'm now using. Now I'm using the Mac, I'm using Final Cut Pro rather than messing around with Premiere and my iPad. Uh, so I made this little montage to reveal what my new camera is. I imagine a few of you have been watching my videos recently you can probably guess what it is but let's uh, roll the scene now. Cool, so as you can see, I've gone and bought myself a Leica M6. I got this camera about two weeks ago, so if you guys watched my video on why I was keeping my uh, Leica M240, I kind of hinted very strongly that I was looking at a bit of a Leica collection where I can have one set of lenses, and I went through a few reasons why I'm keeping my M240, and a lot of them link into why I have gone and bought this. So I actually bought this about a week after that video, so it was about two weeks ago now. So the good news is I've nearly shot through an entire roll of film, um, so I think what we'll do now is we'll talk about why, why I got this and why this particular one. So I mentioned back in that video that I wanted a camera that I could shoot every day that was film and I didn't feel like I really had that. I said in it I didn't really like using Mamiya that much because it's pretty heavy and I don't take it anywhere purely because it's heavy. I do have my Rolly 35 but then I'm really limited, it's 40mm, it's kind of from a black and white age so it's not really aimed at colour film. So that's where this comes in. And I can have one set of lenses that I can use every day for my M6 and my M240. So that was the main selling points. So I guess one of the things I then thought about was what Leica do I want? So I kind of knew I wanted another Leica and I thought about whether well, do I get an M3, do I get an M4, do I get an M6 or do I get an M7? And I know some people might not like this because it kind of feels anti-film but I really wanted a camera with a meter. So that ruled out anything earlier than an M6, so then I went an M6 or an M7. Now, I love mechanical things and the M7 is only mechanical up to, or well, I think it's only a couple shutter speeds, it's like 1 25th and 2, 1 250th of a second are the only manual feature, so if your battery runs out that's all you can do. So that kind of left me with the M6 and that's kind of why I've got this. So there's two main decisions you need to make when you buy an M6. One of them is what, what viewfinder do you go for? What rangefinder mag do you go for? And the other one is, do you go for the TTL version, which this is, or do you go for the classic version? So we'll talk about rangefinders first. So there's three different ones. There is 0 0.58, 0 0.72, and 0.85. And the smaller the number, the wider the field of view, the bigger the number, the more zoomed in it is. And to kind of run you through what they mean, so, so 0 0.58 means it's really good for 28 mil, you can see 35 mil, but the 50 mil is really small. 0.72 means you can see 28 mil, but it's right at the edges, not that great if you're wearing glasses. It's got a good frame line for 35, and the 50 mil is kind of a normal size, it's a little bit small. And then, and then the last option is the 0.85, which means you can't see the 28, the 35 is right on the edge of the frame, and the 50 is quite big, and I think you can see the 90 in that one. Um, so depending on what you predominantly shoot, you need to make sure you get the, the right mag on your rangefinder. So I've gone with the 0.72, which I do think tends to be the more common one. So it means I can shoot 28, 35, and 50. So the three probably the most common focal lengths really easily through this. The only caveat is if you do wear glasses, you might struggle to see the 28, but it's just kind of the edge of what you can see through there. So that's one way of kind of coping with that. Then the next choice is, do you go for the TTL version or do you go for the classic version? So, to be honest with you, I didn't really mind which one I got. I just bought based on price and condition, and the TTL come up, so I went with the TTL version. So the TTL versions means electronic flashes work, um, and you don't have to manually set them. But the other big change is uh, this dial. On the classic version, that dial is much, much smaller. I might see if I can, I'll put an image of the what the normal one, the classic one up here. Um, and it also turns in the other direction and it's a bit of a funny one because prior to this camera being built, all Leicas turned the other way. So when this one came out, there was quite a lot of um, 
confusion, a little bit of uproar as to why they'd done it. But when you look through the viewfinder and you see the meter and the meter tells you which way you need to go, you turn the dial in that direction. So it's intuitive as long as you've not got used to the previous generations of Leica. So for me, personally, I haven't used older versions, so it makes perfect sense to me. But if you're a die-hard Leica fan, you might not like it. You also might not like it if you're regularly using an older version, uh, something older than the M6. Um, but to me, personally, it makes perfect sense. So, like I was saying, I actually had this camera out a couple weeks, um, so I have actually shot a roll of film through it, almost. Uh, I think I don't know if you guys can, you can see that, but I've actually got two photos left. I don't really know how many. You do seem to use up quite a lot of film when you put the film in the bottom. Um, so I guess on my tiny little Roly 35, because it's only this big and you only have to pull the film from here to there, and then you, when you put it in, you end up getting about 39 shots from a roll. So this currently says I'm on shot 35, so it'd be interesting to see how many you get. I have a feeling it's going to be quite literally 36 on the dot, but I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to go and shoot these last two now. Probably just going to go and take pictures of the dog, to be honest with you. Um, but what we'll do then is we'll come back and we'll take this film out and we'll process it and we'll then scan it in. Um, if you guys want to see a video on the whole how do I how do I process film, because this is colour film, so this is a role of colour plus. So I am going to process my own colour film, uh, which there's a bit of a myth around that it's impossible or very, very hard to do. It's really not the case to be honest with you guys. So um, right then, let's go and take I'm gonna go take I'm gonna go take the last couple shots of this now. So, just taking the last couple shots, um, I've also got another roll, so I've actually got two rolls of film to develop, i got this one, um, so this is a, this is actually out of a disposable camera, a little while ago, I don't know if you've watched my video, um, but I went to a festival in Middlesbrough and I used, shot a disposable camera, I hadn't processed this yet, so we'll process that, and this here is the Colour Plus, so that is the roll of film I've just shot in the Leica. Um, and the reason I've shot Colour Plus is it's really cheap, I've got lots of it lying around and if for some reason something in the camera isn't working, I've wasted a few pound, nothing more. Um, so let's go and process these. Um, and the processing is actually quite simple, so I'll quickly run you through what I use. So to process my colour film, I use this kit. I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably have to flip the video so you can see it, but this is it's a, it's a development kit, it has a developer, a bleach and a fixer. Um, you mix, there's six bottles in here, you mix them to make three batches of liquids, I think um, from memory, three of them make the developer, two of them make the bleach and one of them makes the fixer. Um, this is, this cost me about £40, it's good for 50 rolls of film, the only thing is every time I make a batch of chemicals they only last six weeks or so, so I make um, 600 mil at a time, lasts a few months, so to be honest with you, I think I've processed eight. I think I've processed eight rolls of medium format and about twenty rolls of thirty-five mil with this so far, and it's cost me fifty quid. So I'm um, quids in at the minute. The process is really simple. What you do first is you have to warm up all the chemicals. I do that just by running the tap for a little while, and I make like a big water bath that holds the temperature. You have to hold it at like thirty-eight degrees. I then chuck the developer in, invert it for a few minutes. It tells you on a little packet how long you need to leave it for. You empty that out. You chuck in the bleach. Mix that again for about. A few, you mix that again for a few minutes, then you wash that all off, it takes a little while to wash off, then you chuck in the fixer, and then it's job done. You literally hang up to dry, and then we'll be scanning it. I don't know if you can see, but my Epson scanner's just there. I'll run you really briefly through that as well, but I think what we'll do is we'll do the next bit on a time lapse, so you can see me doing this, and hopefully it's a success. I've only messed it up once, I mixed, I got the chemicals around the wrong way once, and yeah, it was a disaster. Um, it literally just took <laughs> it just took the image straight off. The, I, I ended up with a clear bit of film. Um, so, yeah, don't do them in the wrong order. Definitely do them in the right order. I do wear gloves whilst I do this because some of these chemicals have some pretty scary warnings. Um, and you'll see in a minute as well, I put all my chemicals back in the original bottles and I take them up my local recycling centre in terms of disposal. Don't dispose them down the sink. It's not the right thing to do. Uh, but right then. Let's get developing. I'm excited. I'm excited to develop them. I want to see what it looks like. Cool. Let's let's do that. Essentially, this bag is the dark room. I take the films out of the canisters onto these rollers inside this tub, and the tub essentially then becomes the dark room. So this part is really annoying and it's a bit fiddly because you can't see what you're doing. But um, what we'll do is we'll quickly time lapse this.
films are now in there. Um, you can't see them because they're obviously locked away because it's dark in there. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to get developing and I'm going to time lapse that as well. Cool, so that's that done. Um, the only thing that was a little bit funny is the um, the bleach looks like it might have gone off a little bit, but this is what the two films are. So there they are. There's one. And there's the other one. So you can see they're quite different in length, and that's the difference between the disposable, I think it was 27 shots and 36. Um, but just looking through some of them. They do look quite nicely exposed. But next thing to do is literally just wait for them to dry and then we'll get them scanned in. So guys, you've just seen me processing the film. That has to hang up and dry. Uh, it's been hanging up dry now for, I don't know, maybe an hour. Um, it's, got, it's starting to get near the point now where it's ready for me to cut up. So I'm just about to scan in my first piece. So I used the Epson uh, V600, using, and I just used the um, Epson software. So I'm gonna scan these in now. I'll show you some of the best images at the end of this video. Might put a few comments on the bottom of them as well. If you want to see more about how I process and how I scan my film, I do have a video on scanning. Um, it's exactly the same on my Mac as it is on the PC, um, so nothing's changed there. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below, give it a like, and please subscribe. Um, almost every subscriber counts at the minute, so let's try and keep that number ticking away. Um, but go guys, as always, thank you for watching. Cheers.